like, mm-hmm. like hush pka gems thinking about the bone saw when i was watching lincoln a few days ago where there's the the scene where the guy sees like that pit of limbs and i'd never yeah. thought like i everybody knows when it's like civil war shit it's like you get shot or you get a bad scrape it's like well because we don't understand what germs are it's all got to come off <laughs> like and so they did that and like i never thought about like how many people would be walking around without limbs and like there'd just be pits full of arms and legs that people yeah. lost like it's holy shit that like i always thought like world war one would have been the worst war to fight in no civil, civil war, war changed my mind world war one is is a second place but Civil War would be the worst, for sure. Yeah, I remember, I, I've heard about it recently. Someone was was telling me the, uh, about something they'd seen on the Civil War and something about this big battle where there was a no man's land and the the uh, the northern, the Union troops had to like go up a hill across exposed territory for like a couple hundred yards into southern gunfire. And they're just getting massacred in this field. And night falls and they're all out there moaning and begging for water. Yeah. And one southern soldier is out there like going from man to man, giving them water and nobody would shoot him. And I think they called him like the saint of whatever battle it was. You know, let's, mm-hmm. let's call it the saint of whatever hill or whatever the fuck because he was out there. And God, the suffering and all that. And and. Man, that was yeah. That was a really shitty war. Uh, I, I think I about like the impact of those slow-moving, heavy musket balls, and it's it's just so much nastier than a high-velocity rifle impact. It's. I don't it's, know. I know through my experiences uh, playing Battlefield One. That's a pretty mm. crazy war. Uh, World War One. Yeah. <laughs> when they break out the Martini Henry, all the, it is. Yeah. That, yeah. All the trench foot. black powder, motherfucker. That's the. Gun- <laughs> You ever see Zulu where they like slaughter three thousand? Oh yeah. yeah, that's insane, Same Zulu. Gun. Yeah, oh, they're just, story, isn't it? just slaughtering yeah. waves of these guys. That, yeah. I used to wonder what that looked like exactly because when I hear about old school battles, right? Like, like uh, what was three hundred? The Battle of Thermopylae. Do I have that uh, right? Um, um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Thermopylae. The, uh, the the what do you call With it? The gates. small pass and the whatever. hot gate. Yeah. The hot gates. So. Weren't there like a hundred thousand Greeks? I can't think of many no. modern wars with a hundred no, thousand. There, there were three hundred Spartans, and then there were like a couple thousand other uh, Greeks from city states. But there were like, like they they say millions of Persian soldiers, but that's probably like old timey math Crazy, where they're like, right? how many could that be? I mean, nobody's ever counted this. High. <laughs> like, <laughs> what could it be? What's what numbers high? What's the highest number we have? Nine hundred thousand. What what would be higher than that? I don't know a a, bu- a, bu- a million. Like that's how, how many, many people did were in Normandy? Right, like. Ten thousand? I don't even know what a good number would be. Oh, way more than that. The invasion was huge. It was tens yeah. of thousands way, of men landing. More. Twenty yeah, thousand, tens of thirty thousand, more. more. Yeah. Well, 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 you got to like, like the initial beach invasion might have only been a few handfuls of thousand, maybe fifteen thousand or something. But they kept landing men, you know, for days and weeks to come. They, they you know, they, in in the in they call it D Day plus plus, you know, and then they count oh. the days after D Day. So. It's a much bigger number than I thought. One hundred and fifty-six thousand. Four hundred twenty-five thousand were killed. Allied and German combined were killed, wounded, or went missing during Normandy. Almost half so, a million. Jesus. It says this is on D-Day. On D-Day, one hundred fifty-six thousand troops in Normandy. Um, oh, and then it breaks it down: seventy-three thousand. What is this? The American forces numbered 73,000, uh, 23,000 on Utah Beach and 34,000 on Omaha and 15,000 airborne. But yeah, anyway, 156,000 total, 73,000 Americans. Um, that's bigger than I thought. But like I, I hear about these wars where like hundreds of thousands or 500,000 people supposedly were there. And I just think, how does that even work? Like, yeah, what does the front like, line yeah. look like? Are there picnics? A one block back, just like yeah. you know, yeah, there like, have to be, there have to be, but the supply lines have to work like that. You know, it, maybe up in front we have just absolute hell on earth, but a mm-hmm. hundred yards back that way, it's got to be a casual fucking conversation. It's got to be like, yes, they're dying quite badly up there, aren't they? Right? Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> I'm like, nervous like it, about it when that be. gets to us. You know, yeah. I hope our guys are really good. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> in everything I've read, I don't think the Spartans were shooting arrows back. It was the opposite. You know, they were the ones under the uh, the uh, the archer fire and such. Um, and but but World, World War One, they had that just a stalemate for literally years, where they were on each side of those trenches, and it barely moved, and uh, just. 
back behind your lines was command and control and hospitals and people just kind of hanging out. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that that's such a weird way to fight war because it seemed like in the old days it was like, yeah, we're going to war and we'll yeah. be back when war is over. But, but, you know, from this day forth, we're in the war and we're fighting. And then you look at like, uh, I watched uh, MASH back in the day. That was Korea. And uh, you look at Vietnam. I know more about that. And the guys are like, yeah, uh, two more weeks, and then I get to go for R&R. &R. Like, they're going to fly me to, you know, Japan, Solar, or, uh, yeah. Japan or, or South Korea or something, and I'm going to get, like, pussy and liquor and, <laughs> like, a, a nice room and, like, drink with my buddies. And then a week after that, I'm back here in hell. <laughs> Like, like that was a new thing. I think when that started happening, like, like that must have been. That's so weird to me to to put myself in that guy's shoes. To to those those two contrasting things. I certainly wouldn't turn down that R and R. Like you beg for it, you do anything mm -hmm. you, could, you could do to get it. I would think, but it still has to be weird mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, tomorrow I'm going. Just imagine how afraid you would be if like today's Friday and tomorrow, if you make it back from this mission, there's liquor, beer, and pussy oh. to come tomorrow, and, and even more. You want to raise it to the next level. We're going home tomorrow, but we got to go on a mission today. I'd be like, "Fuck today's uh, mission! Light <laughs> me up, like, 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 take, put me in jail. I'm not going on a mission today if we're quitting tomorrow. That's fucking horseshit. I'm not going out to pitch yeah. the first four innings if you're just gonna forfeit the game. <laughs> like, after no. a weekend going to work Monday sucks. Never mind <laughs> getting to be where you're fucking and then having to go and get shot at again. Yeah." <laughs> Oh. It was better than like the way the Japanese handled it. Where like in World War II, we'd be like, "All right, you're shipping off to England for a couple weeks for to you know get a little re relaxation before you're back in it." The Japs, it was just like, "Oh, you just stay in your holes, stay in your holes and fight until you die. That's if you have to sad. eat, if you have to eat one another, so be it. Yeah. But <laughs> don't give up that shitty little hole on that island you don't even use for anything." Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, the Japanese were fucking scary. I think the Japanese are worse than the Nazis. Oh no, better not compare anything to Hitler. It'll be a major deal. I think you're right. <laughs> I think the Japanese were worse than the Nazis, though. They 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 performed vivisection. Um, they, there's that I can't remember what it's called. It's like Unit 808 or something. That that like Japanese military medical group that tortured systematically people. You know, they freeze people to death to start a study hypothermia. They'd oh. infect you with this plague or that disease, and then put you in X condition or Y condition to see how things uh, took. And if you survived, and how long you survived, and what happened to you as you died, and like like maybe they get you to X to to maybe two hours of hypothermia, and then try to save you. Oh, we can save a man two hours in hypothermia by doing this. Don't do that Oof. though, or they die. And they would just use people like that. Now after the war, we wanted all that research, so we spared the people who did it. It's like, oh, did you torture our men for <laughs> like, for three years to figure out some cool stuff? Well, we'd like that information. We'll we'll put that to good use. And Nazi sure, you did that too, people. though, with uh, Mangala and all that, where he did all those twin studies. And we still like, even though he was an evil fuck, it's still like, well, we should probably at least get this information so that we know what he knew scientifically because we will with, never do re replicate these studies because they're evil. same thing with warner von braun you know the the guy who got us to the moon right he, yeah. nazi rocket scientist the guy who was designing the v2 fucking rockets that were pummeling london and causing all that mayhem he's the one we brought over here and got us to the moon now, I, i'm kind of on his side and, and all of this because like i've read about him a bit and you know he's got all these quotes he's like you know when he first made the first v2 he was a rocket guy from like an early age. It was his passion. It's what he loved. And when he first made the V2 and it worked, and like as a weapon of war, it's this missile that fucking goes and blows some shit up somewhere. He was like, it's perfect. It's everything I dreamed it was, but it missed by a quarter million miles because he wanted to go to the moon. Uh, you know, even uh, during the war, that was, his, that was his thought process about this whole thing. So we get him over here and he, he went to the moon. But, but yeah, a lot a of shit, dirty, dirty shit happened after World War II. We're talking about war. I want to segue into World War III. Very well. Big boys do what they want. <laughs> <laughs>